Good morning, everybody. We're glad that you're here at Bible Baptist this morning. This is a different service. You want some of this? Somebody calling me out? Is that it? I've been doing insanity for a couple weeks now. I'm just messing with you. All right, this morning, we're glad that you're here. We have had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, we tried to do a different little, a little change up on our VBS stuff this year, just something a little different because I personally think that as Christians, we need to set the standard for what we believe. And so this year I asked and, and I got the thumbs up. And so we, we brought my friend Steve Harney in here and he, uh, we've done a three day VBS today, finishes it up this morning. I should say this morning is our finale service to our VBS and you all get to be a part of that. And so, but the great part of this has been we have gotten over the last two days, we have seen seven souls come to know Christ. And that is the pump up. Woo! I love it. And the difference in our VBS this year was that we invited moms and dads and the whole family to be a part of it. And even last night, we had a, an adult mom. Um, uh, come for reassurance, and that was a blessing all by itself. We've had kids come for prayer. God showed up in all this, and, and it's no surprise to me that in Steve Harney's ministry that God follows him. Even though that he's a man, he's a sinner saved by God's grace, he is an, he's an awesome resource and an awesome tool for God. And he has got a group of wonderful workers that came with him uh, over the summer. And so today I think they all leave and go home. So he's very excited about that. Um, <laughs> he's had to be a dad all over the summer again, you know, just like back in the days. And so I could imagine what it's like to be around and have teenagers working for you. You know, I know what that's like. And they're, they're a hoot and a, a fistful sometimes. But we're glad that you're here this morning. We want you to sit back and take in what's going on. We're going to do some things that are different. The music that we play this morning may have a little bit more pep, but it has the same message. We may ask you to move your hands around a little bit. I know that's crazy, but our kids' services, we jump, we spin, we do all the stuff. And so we get kids excited about it, and, and we want you to be excited this morning as well. Be aware this morning, however, if you're sitting on the front row, there will be things flying around in the air. We may see some craziness with these unicycles, so, and we may have somebody who comes up to play with dolls. But in all of it, in all of it, even with the magic, little magic tricks and all the things that go on, we know that God's in control of it all, and he's got a message just for you this morning, or you wouldn't be here. All right. Now you all are going to get a taste of what we've got to deal with over the last two nights. I want to introduce to you my friend. He is the founder and CEO of Cool Kids Ministries. He travels all over the United States, and I messed up on this, but also all over the world. And shares the gospel of Christ through his magic, his tricks, and his wonderful witty way. We give a big hand for Steve Harney. You know, of all, am I in there? of all the ways I've ever been introduced, I don't think witty way has ever been used in the introduction whatsoever. And all these witty ways. Witty, bitty, witty ways. <laughs> it is good to be with you guys this morning. We're looking forward to it. Uh, in just a moment, I'm going to introduce you some, to some really amazing young people that we've had the fantastic time of being with for the past month. They showed up at our house on July the 5th, and the majority of them will leave us today. They will leave us tired. They will leave us worn out. Some of them will leave us thankfully that we let them live. And some of them will leave us, and we'll be thankful that they let us live. But we are glad to have had them with us. It's been a great week, or great week, great month. We've been glad to be with you guys. It's been a great weekend. And uh, to see folks come to know Christ as their Savior, I'm telling you, I never get tired of that. Somebody asked me one time, they said, Brother Steve, how do you keep the schedule that you follow? How do you keep that? Because in the last month, we've had one day off. And that one day off came when there was a storm in Michigan and it, the power was out of the church. And so they had to cancel. We weren't supposed to have that night off, but they had to cancel because there was no electricity in the building. Or else we'd been going that night too. 
At one point in time, half of them had to leave us and go to Pennsylvania <laughs> while Sneezy and the rest of us stayed behind and did a program in Michigan. We always know where Taylor's at. <clears throat> so uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been a wonderful month, and they don't even know this yet. I was just counting it up last night. In the past month, they've been able to minister to almost 4,000 people, and they've seen over 140 people make professions of faith in Jesus Christ since they joined us a month ago. So it's been an awesome time. But we're not done yet. We still got today and this morning, and we're going to have a good time. And we don't want you to miss out on anything. So turn the sound up on that laptop there. Keep that thing cranked. And uh, let's have some fun this morning, okay? so glad you're here today. Guys, come up here on stage and join me. Grab the handheld mic that Paige had. Okay. Spread out across here real quickly. I want you guys to introduce yourselves. You're just standing here. I'll figure that out for you. Get across the stage here. Then let's get all the way up there to on. And let's just start down here on this end. Let's go across. Let's introduce ourselves. Tell them where you're from. A little bit about yourself. Keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Speak loudly. Slowly and clearly. Begin. Hello, my name is Adam Walls from Logan, Ohio. I'm 19 years old, just finished my first year at Appalachian Bible College, and I'm the one that plays with dolls. <laughs> my name is Kyla Ellis. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. I am 18 years old. I just graduated from um, high school. And I'm accident prone. (laughs) 
I am Taylor Couples. I'm from Finley, Ohio. I'm 19 years old. I just graduated high school as well, and I talk in weird, random accents. My name is Paige White. I'm 17 years old. I'm from Wheelersburg, Ohio, and I'm going into my senior year. I'm Kristen Slade. I'm 21 years old. I'm from New Richmond, Ohio, and I run my own edible arrangements. My name is Kelsey Wilson. I'm 20 years old. I'm not from Ohio. I'm from Flemingsburg, Kentucky, and I'm going into my third year at Baptist Bible College in Springfield, Missouri. My name is Seth Maxwell. I'm from the middle of nowhere in Minnesota, of all places, and I plan on running away to join the circus. Yeah. And the circus is also known as being a youth pastor. As Jared can attest, this is a force to be reckoned with. Don't mess with me. We call her mama. We call her boss. We call her anything she'd like for us to call her. I have had the joy of being married to her for 35 years. We're all bound, bound to Yes. Me. And I'll let her introduce herself. My name is Cheryl Harney. I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. <sighs> Something weird about me. You're married to me. I'm married to him. <laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> she just looked at Cheryl and said, you didn't tell us how old you were been nice knowing you, Taylor. It's been a joy to be with you all this weekend. I want you to stand with us this morning. I'm going to lose a microphone. Here, Paige, you hang on to that. You're going to need it later on. You stand up with us. We want to sing a song this morning. I feel like I'm having a yell to be heard here. Can we crank me up here just a little bit? Or let me adjust. Is that, is that better? Yeah. How's that? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We're going to sing a song this morning. Now, this song's a tad bit different than anything you've ever sung in church before. It's a song we've been using sort of as a theme for what we're doing this year. And the word's fish. A lot of people think we were going to come in and have a fishing theme. We really didn't have a fishing theme at all. The word fish is actually an acronym for fun in serving him. The very first night we looked at the fun, Luke 15, 10. There's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. There's a party in heaven when somebody gets saved. There is fun in heaven. Last night we looked at that letter I for N. In Luke chapter 5, we find the story of Jesus coming down to the water and getting into the boat of Peter, James, and John. And when he got into that boat, he changed their life forever. And when he gets into our life, he changes our lives forever. So there is fun in. And this morning, we're going to look at that SH. What's the sound the SH makes? We're going to look at that sound a little bit this morning, okay? Shh. And just what that means. But the song that we used, sort of our theme song, is a song called Jump. You never jump at all during this song. The reason you don't jump at all is the young lady that you'll see in the video, and it's very easy to pick her out. She's in a little blue and white print outfit, and she just stands out different from all the others. Her name is Lauren Thiessen. At the time this video was produced, she was 10 years old. Lauren is now 14. Lauren was born with something called osteogenesis, or brittle bone disease. When Lauren was a few days old, she sneezed, and her mother heard her right femur snap completely in two. Taking her to the hospital, they found out that during the birth process, every one of her ribs had been broken, her collarbone had been broken, and one of her arms had been broken. Lauren is never going to have a normal life like you and I. They won't even re come closely remote to looking like normal. If Lauren jumps, she breaks a foot, a leg, an arm, something breaks. But Lauren wanted to do something that would tell a bunch of people about Jesus Christ. 
And some of our friends at Group Publishing got together a few years ago, and they put together this video for Lauren. And Lauren recorded it for one of the VBS programs that they put out that year. For the past four years, this video has been used all around the world to tell boys and girls, moms and dads about Jesus Christ. The song says, can you feel the joy? Don't it make you want to jump, jump, jump? Don't it make you want to move, move, move? Throw your hands to the roof, roof, roof. <clears throat> the, the verse to it says, you have to know that God is always by your side. If you're feeling down, look around and just enjoy your life. Now, Lauren says, listen, with all that I've got, I know God's on my side and I can enjoy life. And I'm going to get out here and I'm going to sing this song. And my question to you this morning then is this. What's your problem? What's your problem? If I can sing this song and I could break a leg, an arm, or whatever, just trying to do it, if I can do this, if I'm willing to get out here and make this video and put it out there for everybody to hear about Jesus Christ, if I'm willing to take my life and limbs in hand and risk the, the problem of being, having something broken, what's your problem? You're just standing here this morning. You've got nothing going on whatsoever. Why can't you sing about him? You're going to walk out of here today, and you're going to go out into family and friends and the world. Why can't you talk about him? If I'm willing to do this and what it could cost me, what's your problem? Why aren't you willing to give it a shot? So, you give it a shot with us this morning. Let's see how far we can get into this thing. I know there's a remote control laying around here somewhere. There it is. They laugh at me. I lose this thing more than you can possibly imagine. A year ago at camp, one of the camps walked up, this guy walked up and just matted me on the forehead like that. What I didn't know is he'd stuck a piece of Velcro across my forehead. Another guy walked up and he had the Velcro on the back of this and they stuck this across my forehead too. I lost it. I'm looking all over for it and it's right there. Felt like my mother when I was a kid trying to find her glasses. I would let my mom walk through the house numerous times looking for her glasses. Have you seen my glasses? And I would say, oh no mom, let me walk with you and see if we can find where you left them at. And I would do everything I could to maneuver her in front of a mirror so she could finally look up and see her glasses on top of her head. And then she'd whip me. So, <laughs> but it was worth the effort, okay? So I want you to sing this morning. I want you to enjoy this morning. I want you to have a good time. And I just want to remind you, what's your problem? This is different. This is not Sunday morning church. This isn't a sweet hour of prayer. We're praising God. And we're doing something different for our kids today. Because if we don't, we're going to lose them. 50% of them are walking away from the church by the time they reach 8th grade. 90% of them are walking away from church by their freshman year of college. And we're not getting them back. In every state in the union except Hawaii, church attendance has gone down in the last decade. Every state in the union. More churches close their doors every year than new churches open their doors. The average church attendance in the United States of America today is 75. That is lower than the United Kingdom, England, which is 84. Since the year 2000 to now, we're on a faster track downward than England was after World War II. It took England 20 years to just kind of drop off the face of the earth from 1945 to 1965 in the Christian realm. A powerhouse of Christianity prior to World War II, non-existent by 65. Do you realize that today in the Philippines, they talk about sending missionaries to the United States of America? So let's sing this morning. I can Jump in. Joy today. You've got to know that God, God is always by your side. If you're feeling down, look around. Just enjoy your life. Can you feel the joy? Don't it make you want to jump, jump, jump? Don't it make you want to move, move, move? Throw your hands to the roof. i 
yourselves a big hand this morning, all right? Thank you, guys. We are so excited that you are here today. We are so excited to be here with you today. I want to say a special thank you. Last year, you all helped out in a missions trip that we took to the Ukraine. God has opened a door for us. Uh, it has been mine and Cheryl's goal ever since we started on the road nine years ago to not only share the gospel here in the United States of America, but to share it with boys and girls around the world. God opened the door for us. I've been to the Ukraine three times now and told boys and girls over there about Jesus Christ. We conducted a camp over there last October, and you guys helped us out tremendously with that. And then God has opened another door. In March, I'm going to Honduras. Next August, I'm going to Romania to do a camp over there with the children there. And then we'll go back to the Ukraine again next year in October. God has opened a tremendous door and just, just done tremendous things. It's amazing how he just continues to open the doors and gives us a chance to walk through them and tell people about him. So this morning, what we want to do right now is we want to get into our penny offering this morning. We've had a penny offering all week long. Thus far, let me get this out here. Where did I put it at? Thus far, it's in my heart, right next to my heart. Heart, heart, heart. I know I stuck it here someplace. There it is. The girls have given $101.36. The boys have given $78.27. So girls are ahead right now, big time, okay? Now, are my team leaders in here? I don't recognize you all because you had your faces painted. Team leaders, if you come down front here. I'm explaining it. We do a penny offering just a tad bit different, okay? If you've got a penny... A nickel, a dime, a quarter, 50 cent piece, one of them new cool looking dollar bills, or dollar coins, I mean, then you're going to put those in the buckets. But to be real honest with you, we're not as interested in the coins as we are in those pictures of dead presidents. The dollar bill, the five dollar bill, the ten dollar bill, the twenty dollar bill. Now here's how it's going to work. We're going to play a song now. Let me show you something here. Take a look at these kids. Those are just two kids in the Ukraine. They've been told all their life there is no God. They have no hope. Every year in the orphanage, 20,000 kids, of all the orphanages there, approximately 20,000 kids graduate out of those orphanages every year. The problem is they graduate out by the time they're 16. It's against the law to have a job until you're 18, so they just dump them out in the streets. 95% of all the kids that are in orphanages in the Ukraine have a mom or a dad. They just don't want them. They're too busy running around doing drugs, everything else, to care about the kids. They're an unwanted generation. And because of that, these kids just end up right back on the streets. And because they've been taught that there's no hope, there's no God, there's nothing for them, of the 20,000 that graduate out every year, approximately 10,000 end up taking, excuse me, approximately 10% or 2,000 of them end up taking their lives within the first two years that they're out. That means that in the nine years that Cheryl and I have been on the road, and we've seen almost 8,000 people walk aisles and trust Christ as their Savior in the last nine years. But that means in that same nine years, approximately 18,000 boys and girls in the Ukraine have taken their lives and stepped out into a Christless eternity because they, they don't think there's any hope. When we get a chance to make a difference. These two boys right here, we'll have a chance to have them at the camp this uh, fall. The way we get them there is we have to pay for them to come. We've got to pay for every kid that comes at 60 bucks for the week at camp. We've got to pay for translators because we don't speak Ukrainian and they don't speak English. We've got to pay for workers from the orphanage to come because they're the ones who are actually the guardians of them, so we've got to pay for them to be there. We have to pay for at least two workers to come and be a part of it. We have to rent the camp. We've got to pay a bribe to the orphanage. They don't really call it a bribe. They just tell us what they want us to do for the kids, and we have to do it if we want to get the kids. Three years ago, it was buy every one of them a coat. Two years ago, it was buy every one of them shoes. This past year, they wanted, to buy, they wanted us to buy a big screen TV. We found out that once we translated the, or transferred the money over over there, that big screen TV, a 50-inch big screen TV only cost us 178 American dollars. That's like 220 some odd thousand grivna. Very expensive for them. Wasn't too expensive for us. We began to think then, how could we buy a t big screen TV over there and bring it back to the Americans and sell it here? That'd be, we could make some serious money, but the tax us getting it in here is going to be a whole new story. So give up on that idea. But you can help us out. Every 60 bucks pays the kids way to camp. Every penny helps make a difference in some kid's life. 
So the boys and girls are going to come down. Any adult that wants to can come down. You've got money you want to put in, you put it in there. Every dime is going to go to help make that a difference. Now, if you've got coins, you put them in the bucket. If you've got dollar bills, you hand them to them. Every $5 bill represents a brick, or every $5 represents a brick. Bricks, gold bricks, weigh more than coins. The very first night, the guys had more dollars than they had coins. And so they, got a, they were a brick different than the girls. Come to find out the very first night when we got it all counted up and it was done, the boys won. But the boys had $39.05. The girls actually had $39.66. But because they had more dollars, a brick weighs more than pennies does. And so you want to get as many bricks as we possibly can today. So I'm going to play a video. You get to see some of the stuff that goes on over there at the camp where we were at this past year. Some of the kids from the orphanage, you can watch that. You can come down and put things in here. Keep an eye on what's going on. Let's take a penny offering this morning, okay? That's the orphanage that they live in. That's the orphanage where we get the kids from. And you'll be able to see more about that in the video. So girls over here, boys over here. Let's take a penny offering this morning. Come right ahead right now, okay? And just like a drum, I can hear the hearts beating. I know my God won't let them grow defeated. Every child has a dream to belong and be loved. Boys become kings. Girls will be queens. Wrapped in your mind. for Adam and Dizzy. Um, hello, testing, testing, one, two. Um, I was going to do my dolls, but he got mad at me and ran off. So I, I thought I'd use a different doll slash, I'm not going to say it. So I need Brother Jared to come help me. Do you have the mic? Don't, you don't need to turn it on. It's okay. I can take care of it. <laughs> Tell us where you're from. And what's your name again? Awesome. <laughs> it's just a joke. You didn't catch it. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> all right, Brother Jared, you're going to stand right here. All right. Now, have you ever um, had words put in your mouth before? Better question. Are you married? I am working with a pro. <laughs> Don't take it the way I mean it. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is I'm going to touch the back of your neck, and your mouth is just going to drop. Now, we're, to get you started, you're just gonna, I'm going to touch the back of your neck. You're going to tell us all your name just, just to get you started, okay? All right, you understand this part? Cool. All right, now here we go. Okay, now. No, you just go ahead. Now, go ahead and tell us your name. I'm going to work with it. Okay, now, that was good. But you need to make it a lot quieter so we can barely hear you, okay? That was, that was perfect. That was per- but, but because I, I found out your, your mouth really isn't that big, and that's a good thing. So to take care of this problem, I'll fix that. <clears throat> uh, Brother Jared, how are you today? Earth, sir. You're so good. Yes, I'm good. You are so good today. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Well, Brother Jared, what kind of things do you do? I do. I know some things. You do amazing things. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. What amazing things do you do? I some. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not real puzzles. You make weird faces. Well, that's good. What other things do you do? I can say the alphabet backwards. You can say the alphabet backwards. Yes, you can. Well, you know, that's really cool because not even I can say the alphabet backwards. I can't. <laughs> Guess I can't either. You'll catch that later on. <clears throat> I'm not real. <laughs> 
Well, what other things do you do, Brother Jared? I shall sing songs. You can sing songs? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Well, would you like us to sing us a song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what song do you want to sing? <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're not catching it. It's still okay. It's all right. <laughs> I'll keep throwing them out there. <laughs> How about you sing Jesus Loves Me? Oh, yeah. You want to start us off? Yes, okay. <clears throat> Still nothing. It's okay. It's over the head. It's all right. <laughs> I'll keep throwing them out there. <laughs> One of them got it. <laughs> all right, Brother Jared, you go ahead and you take it away. Well, that's a good idea. You're going to do the motions. Yes, you <laughs> Yes. Well, you go ahead, you sing that song, and you do those motions. I'm gonna throw those nursings. All right. Just notice that I don't have an extra lever for the eyes. That is all. I put it on mute accidentally. <laughs> this don't work without this working. Uh, no, still not catching it. It's okay. Last, just last, last no. You guys help me introduce another young man. His name is Seth Maxwell. Come ahead, Seth. Now, here it is. Well, I like to juggle, and I'm a little crazy, but that's fun. Should I, should I clue him in to when to clap? Yes. Okay, for those of you that haven't been here all week, um, I have a secret signal because people don't know when to clap for a juggler. So I'm gonna help you out. When I do this number, it means clap. Cool? <laughs> okay, let's practice, ready? Do the uh... Okay. And then when you're done, you take a bow. Oh, I missed. Oh well. Anyway, I've juggled a lot this week. I've juggled quite a few things, but today. I think I'm gonna ride the unicycle, but I need a volunteer. Who wants to learn how to ride this? You know, little guy here, come on. Anybody, 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 anybody? Anybody wanna learn how to ride this? Red shirt, we got this, okay. What's your name? Dustin. Dustin, okay, how this works, you take the right pedal, put it on the ground, sit on it first, put your foot on that pedal, jump, and then keep going, okay? I'm gonna help you out. Ready? Sit on that. Put your foot on the pedal, right? Bottom one. There you go. Then you jump up. Ready? Come on, come on. Oh, hold on. You know, you're a natural of this, you know? Like, you are so good that I think you're ready for level two. <laughs> you got this? Okay, here, hold this. It's the same basic principle. We're gonna give Dustin a countdown, ready? Five, four, three, two, one. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> give Dustin a big hand. Here, I'm gonna go that way first. So, in essence, it is the same principle. It's just a little taller. So, we'll see if I can do this here. Ready? Okay, I'm good. Okay. 
So we need a countdown, ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Now comes the hardest part. Can anybody say timber? There we go. Now, I got one more trick. Pull that off for me. It's the big finale. Brother Jerry was talking about it all week. This is the big finale. <laughs> These are machetes. Yes, they are real. No, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> They are sharp. I have the scars to prove it. And engraved on these, I have Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So if I understand that right, that means when we read God's word, it can get a little dangerous. So today, we're going to get a little dangerous. Hopefully I don't lose a finger, or a hand, or a head. <laughs> okay. Ready? Oh. <laughs> okay, try this again here. See, I would, I would rather drop it than catch the wrong end, so. <laughs> right. Okay. Try this again here. That was a practice. I don't, I don't often do that. Whew. There we go. Oh. It was just a microphone. They have plenty more. Just kidding. <laughs> Hand it to Paige. Now, before you go far, far away, yeah, we're gonna do that memory verse one more time. Stick close, okay? <clears throat> we're almost done. I don't want you to be looking at your watch going, it's, it's 10 till and he hasn't even started preaching yet. Trust me, it'll be very short this morning. We'll be out of here no later than two, I promise you, okay? It's not gonna be an all day affair, I promise. Psalm 4610, let's say it one more time. Ready, one, two, three, shh. Be still and know that I am God. Are you listening today? He's talking. I guarantee you, he's talking. Miss Cheryl, could you get me a young man and a young lady this morning? While she's picking those out, about 100 years ago, there was a man by the name of Harry Houdini who got a wild idea that he was going to escape from a straight jacket. A straight jacket... Heavy canvas sewn together with strips of leather. It was used as an incarceration type thing. Put somebody in this, they were trapped, okay? No getting out. Harry Houdini chose downtown New York City and hung upside down from a flagpole. It took over five and a half minutes for him to escape. It is said that 20,000 people showed up that day. Full-grown men and women, adults, passed out as they watched him hang upside down and try to escape. About four years ago on the Oprah Winfrey show, Chris Angel, the mind freak, allowed Oprah Winfrey to stick him in one of these. He hung up down, upside down from a cable there in her auditorium. And in two minutes and about 30, 35 seconds, he escaped from that. Now, I'm not putting this thing on today. Unfortunately, this summer has been the summer of my uh, discontent with all the things that have gone on. And I've been living most of the summer with a cracked rib. But I am going to put it on him. So would you come right here Say so you want to lose that hat, if you'll come right up here. By the way, as he was riding that thing around there a while ago, did anybody else get the idea as you were looking at him? A young Abraham Lincoln is here riding a unicycle through our church. <laughs> All right. We're going to you to step right inside of here. Now, your name is? Tiffany. Tiffany. All right. And your name is? Thomas. Thomas. 
Well, Seth, if you would put this thing on right here. So this is because I juggle knives. Mm, and this was because you threw them at me. Oh. <laughs> okay. Put that on right there. All right. Turn around. Put your back to the audience. Now, Tiffany and Justin. Huh? Thomas. Justin, Thomas, it's names begin with the letters of the alphabet. That's okay. Now, here's what I want you to do. Come right around here. You guys are going to fasten him up here, okay? Just like a belt. You're just going to stick that through there, pull it over, put it in as far as you can, fasten him up. I'll do the strap that goes between the legs there. Then we'll allow you guys to do his arms, okay? So you guys just start. You alternate on that. We'll get a little music here to escape by. Then we'll get him going here today, okay? Get him all fastened in there. Tight as it'll go, fashion it in. You guys give a great big hand today. Some of you sitting in here this morning are just as trapped as he was. You're bound up by something called sin. Or you may be a Christian today, but your life isn't what it ought to be. It's been so long since you told somebody about Jesus Christ, you've forgotten how. Perhaps you never have told anybody about Jesus Christ. You're battling with secret sins today that nobody knows about, or you think nobody knows about, and your life is bound up. I want you to know the Bible says that we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then some of you are sitting here today and you're just trapped in sin. Shh. Be still. He'll speak today if you listen. He'll make a difference in your life. The Bible says in John 8, 32, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can escape out of sin today, too, if you just listen. He's talking. Will you hear him? I'm going to ask Paige to come this morning right before we look into God's Word. And we're only going to look for a short time this morning, I promise you, I assure you. I've known this little girl since she was a baby. I mean a baby. I, if I remember correctly, I held her in my arms when she was only about a year old. I've known her for a long time. A year ago, May, mm-hmm. right? Her daddy can't carry a note in a bucket if you strapped it around his neck and pushed him off a cliff with it. He'd lose it on the way down. Her brother is the same way. Her other brother, same way. Younger sister, same way. Mom, mom can sing a little bit. This child, I'll let you be the ones to judge that. God has given her a talent, and she's going to use it this morning. So would you guys... Listen as Paige White sings for us today. That's right. There's a peace I've come to know When my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is Worthy is the Lamb. 
Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still. We live in a day and age when we don't know what it means to be still. We live in a day and age when our children don't know what it means to be still. If you were to get out here today and walk around the community, you'll find people walking around. They've got earbuds in. They're listening to music. You go to a grocery store, you go to Walmart, you go to anywhere like that, you walk through, people are walking around, they're talking on their Bluetooth, they're listening to music, they got out a cell phone, they've got something going on. We don't know what it is to be still, just to sit and to listen. True story. My son lives in Somerset, Kentucky. He's been over here with us the past couple of nights. He's been with us the last week. He went to Walmart one day to do some grocery shopping. When he got to Walmart, he went to the restroom to do what you do and you go to a restroom, and he went to a stall, went in, and he sat down. And he's sitting in the stall at Walmart in Somerset, Kentucky, and the guy in the stall next to him said, how you doing? <laughs> now, you ladies go to the restroom. You take a crowd with you. You all may converse while you're there. Guys don't do that. There's an unspoken rule, man. When you walk through that door, all talking ceases. But the dude in the stall, how you doing? <laughs> Sam's like, um, okay. <laughs> Having a good day? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing later on? Sam's like, I don't know. Wanna go get something to eat? <laughs> what? I'm just grocery shopping. Then the guy says, dude, I'm going to have to call you back. The guy in the stall next to me thinks I'm talking to him. <laughs> if you have to make a phone call in the bathroom, you're way too busy. We don't know what it means just to stop and to listen, just to stop and to be quiet, just to shh, be still. I want to show you something today. I'm going to do something with you. I would like for everybody in here, boys and girls, adults, everybody in here, on the count of three, I want you to turn to the person next to you. I just want you to start, just, I just want you to start talking in a normal conversation. I don't care what you talk about. Just turn and talk to the person beside you. You ready? On the count of three, just everybody turn and start talking to the person beside you until I tell you to stop. You ready? One, two, three. Go. Just normal conversation. Just talk. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, raise your hand. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, raise your hand. Can you hear me? Stop. You missed it, didn't you? You see, the whole time you were talking, I was standing here doing this. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, raise your hand. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, raise your hand. Can you hear me? You see, you were busy talking and all the noise was going on and you missed it. And I am convinced, I am absolutely totally convinced that today God is speaking and he's speaking and he's speaking. Can you hear me? I'm talking to you. Are you listening to me? Do you hear what I'm saying? But we're so busy with the music and with the cell phones and with the radios going and the computers blaring. We've got so much stuff going in our life that we can't hear that still small voice saying, can you hear me? I'm talking to you. 
I want to work in your life. You, you don't have enough money to pay the bills. I want to help you. Can you hear me? Hey, your dad's about to die and I want to give you some comfort. Can you hear me? Hey, there's some turmoil in your life right now. I want to take care of it. Can you hear me? You see, we don't take the time to be still and just know that he's God. We don't take the time to stop and listen and just know that he's still on the throne. We don't take the time just to shut up and say, hear my Lord, thy servant heareth. Speak to me. There's fun in serving him. But in order for us to have the fun, we are going to have to shh, be still, and know that he's God. If you're too busy to come to church, you're too busy. If you're too busy to read your Bible, you're too busy. If you're too busy to stop in the grocery store and to share with someone there about Jesus Christ, you're too busy. Do you know what busy means? B-U-S-Y. Being under Satan's yoke. You're too busy being under Satan's yoke. Because that isn't what Jesus said. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. It's easy. My burden is light. Who are you listening to today? Are you listening to the people of the world, the things of the world that tell you you've got to have a bigger house, a bigger car, more money, more stuff for your kids? Or is it, shh, be still and know that I am God? You know what our kids need to see more than anything else, moms and dads? They need to see you guys being quiet. And letting God speak to you. How many times have your kids walked into a room and found you with your Bible laid open, reading and studying what God has to say to you? How many times have your kids walked into a room and heard you calling their names out in prayer? How many times have your kids seen you just being shh, quiet and listening to God? No wonder these kids are walking away from the church. They don't see us living it. They don't see us being quiet. They don't see us letting God work in our lives. Just be still and know that I'm God. He said in the last part of that verse, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. <laughs> the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Right now, this morning, he promised that wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, there he'd be in the midst. Right now, God the Lord of hosts is right here this morning in our presence. Can you hear him? He's speaking. He's talking. Are you listening? For some of you this morning, he's saying to you, hey, it's me. Remember, you came to me a long time ago and you said, forgive me of my sins and save me and give me a home in heaven, and I did. But where have you been? I want to be your friend, but you never talk to me. Will you just stop and listen? For some of you today, he's saying, hey, come. I'll give you rest. I will save you of your sins. You don't have to die and go to hell. That is not what I wanted for you. I will give you a home in heaven, but you're going to have to ask for it. I'm not going to make you love me. 
I'm not going to make you choose me. You have to decide you want to. He's talking. Are you listening? You see, the neat part about listening is it's not something you have to do forever. It's something you do a little bit at a time. Cheryl and I just don't sit and talk all day long. We don't have that kind of time, but we do talk. We communicate. We've been married 35 years. You can't be married 35 years and not communicate. You have to talk. It can't just be a one-sided conversation. If all you're talking to God is gimme, 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 amen, thank you. That's a one-sided conversation. Sometimes your prayer life ought to start off this way. Dear Lord, it's me. I'm going to hush. You talk. And he will. If you listen. It just takes a few seconds. Compared to eternity, it just takes a few seconds to, to sit down and talk. And you know what? Some of you this morning need to talk to God. Some of you this morning need to invest just a few seconds in God. To talk to him. In a matter of seconds, your life could be completely changed. This morning, in just a matter of seconds, that's all it would take, and your life could be transformed. In a matter of seconds, you could experience total and complete forgiveness today. In a matter of seconds, you could start your life all over again. In just a matter of seconds, you could be reunited with your creator, the one who put everything outside here just for us. To understand what true peace really is, it only takes a matter of seconds. Just a matter of seconds. That's it. But I want to remind you of something this morning. If you're going to know that you're going to spend eternity in heaven, you're going to have to invest that matter of seconds and talk to him. Because it only takes one second to say no. So what are you waiting for? You're going to say yes to him or a no? It just takes a matter of seconds. He's speaking this morning. Will you listen? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed.